never thought of brand name. Um, it was going to be the other way around, but I've got the short straw here. But what a triumph to have someone of his understanding, his compassion, his scientific knowledge to front this fantastic campaign. And obviously all the people that are here now and all the people who can't be here for whatever reason are absolutely 100% behind him. I certainly am. I know in this day and age there are very few ways we can express our feelings. In this case, our feelings of outrage and dismay about some of the decisions taken by our leaders. This is how we do it, by gathering together, walking, and communi communicating our views in a peaceful way. We are peaceful because ours is the voice of reason and compassion does not need to be raised. A voice of compassion never needs to shout. <laughs> in England's green and pleasant land. I've always believed that we are a nation of animal lovers for all the right reasons, and that we believe in compassion, not cruelty, in sanctuary, not suffering, in welfare, not abuse. And although I know there are many, many things we should do better, I've always believed that when it comes to animals, we were making some progress. Until now in spite of the debate which is happening on Wednesday. If the humanity of society can be measured by the compassion it shows to non-human creatures, then should the cull go ahead? Hist no, no. But history will judge us if that happens to have taken a terrible and unnecessary step backwards. I don't need to repeat for you the scientific evidence against the cull. It's overwhelming. I don't need to rehearse for you the parliamentary debates on this issue. They have been massively against the cull. I can only echo the public outcry on this issue. It is very well documented. I totally understand that the government wishes to end the seemingly endless and cruel impact of bovine tuberculosis on cattle and on the farming community. I want to believe that the only reason they wish to take action is because they want to alleviate both human and animal suffering, not because it's going to save money. But, in my mind, seeking to alleviate the suffering of farm animals and the farming community by inflicting suffering and eradicating thousands of badgers does not make sense. It is morally and it is not as if we don't have a choice. We do. Many experts on this subject can speak at length about the raft of measures that can and must be taken to reduce the impact and prevalence of bovine TB in dairy herds. Restricting the movement of cattle, improving biosecurity, enhancing on-farm hygiene, and more. But to elect to cull badgers by the thousand, knowing that the likely best outcome after 10 years is perhaps a 16% reduction in the presence of bovine TB is not only scientific, political, and ethical madness, it is surrendering our cattle herds to bovine TB in perpetuity. The real decision, the brave decision, the robust decision, the logical decision, and the right decision is to immediately invest whatever it takes to bring into being a cattle vaccination program to ensure that in 10 years time, cattle no longer fall victim to bovine TB, whether it comes from badgers, or deer, or spoil from the ground, or anywhere else. Our herds will be safe and because our herds will be immune. And most importantly, we will not unnecessarily, callously, and unjustifiably put to death hundreds and thousands of badgers, needlessly. that will be experienced by the badger 
things themselves. Clearly, the Secretary of State believes he has no option. I say to him that he does. I say to him that he will earn the deserved respect and appreciation of the vast majority of the British public if he is courageous enough to abandon his stated policy and to work with us, with all of us. <laughs> to end the scourge of Bova TV and to save that wonderful Mr. Badger. Aww.